Chapel AME Church, where we are living in a year of restoration. Adams Chapel is located at 3813 Edgerton Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21215. And the very fine pastor is Reverend Rosalind Crosby. Our scripture of the month is Matthew 6 and 33. The New King James Version says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Congratulations to all those celebrating birthdays and or anniversaries in August. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. August is National Wellness Month. Practice self-care, manage stress, and have a healthy routine. If you have any prayer requests, if you would like to accept Christ, call or text 410-701-0234 or use the following links to us at www dot adams chapel ame dot org slash prayer dash request we thank you for your financial support of adams chapel ame ministry if you would like to give you can do so electronically by simply giving with give lafi or you may mail checks or money orders to Adams Chapel AME Church at 3813 Edgerton Road, E-G-E-R-T-O-N Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21215. Join us in our faith studies by phone. Sundays at 9.45 a.m., join us for church school by dialing into 725-735-9068. And on Mondays, join our church school at 7. 15 p.m. by dialing 725-735-9068. No access code is needed. And please worship with us online Sunday mornings at 1115 on Facebook uh, at Adams Chapel AME and again at 3.30 p.m. on YouTube at Adams Chapel AME Church. Thank you for worshiping with us and have a powerful week in the Lord. All right, whenever you're ready. Eternal and all wise God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come into thy house one more time. We thank you, O oh gracious God, for your love and for your mercy. We thank you for your hand of protection and your hand of provision. We're so thankful come one more time into this place to worship and to praise in your holy name. And we thank you, O gracious God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you that you are God and you are God. Alone. You are God.
as our guide that we will make it safely through. We pray this morning for Adams Chapel and the church and churches all over this country and around the world. We're praying for our pastor today. We pray that you will strengthen her and lift her up and guide her as she does the work of a pastor. We're praying for all pastors this morning because we know that they have an exceptional job under these most trying circumstances. You're God. You're God alone. You've been God from the beginning, and you'll be God in the end, and you'll be God even after we are God. Thank you, oh gracious God, for your love, for your mercy. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and your kindness. Bless our communities. Bless and give hope to those who have none. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake.
overlooking me. My resume and my work speaks for me. I'm asking you, why not me? You gave all the rest of them a chance. I'm good at my job. I do good for the ministry. I can do this. I don't understand why not me. I know that I'm a woman and I got some age on me, right. but I'm still asking you why not me. Mm. I'm sure all of us have said this word sometime or another in their lives, on their jobs, in their church, in their home. Why not me? Why not? I'm sure that thought has come across your mind. Why not me? And this story in the book of Acts asks that question, why not me? After Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, those apostles who witnessed his resurrection decided it was time to get back to everyday life and get busy doing the work of the kingdom. The first thing on their agenda, the first thing on their agenda was let us replace the disciples who had gone awry. Let us replace Judas and make this apostolic team 12 all over again. There was work to be done in the vineyard, and the church had to get itself in order. God wanted them to get ready for what God was going to do next, and they knew God was up to something. How many of us know in the midst of this pandemic, God is up to something, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. It's not what it looks like somebody preached the other day. But Peter, he stood and he took charge. He suggested that they ought to fill the position immediately and lay out the criteria, because you know it's always a criteria, right? First, the person had to be somebody who had been with them from the beginning, who had seen um, John baptize Jesus, who had seen Jesus heal and um, um, deliver and do miracles and teach and preach. And then they saw him suffer, bleed, and die on Calvary's cross. Uh -huh. That person, secondly, must also be an eyewitness that Jesus had resurrected from the grave. Uh -huh. When Peter was finished speaking, the Bible revealed two men fit the criteria. Joseph called Basagas and Matthias. The people went through the process. They cast it, locked them. When they had finished, Matthias was chosen to become the 12th apostle in the group. Who would lead the kingdom? Who would project um, to evangelize and let everybody know how good God was? It was only two candidates. One chosen Matthias celebrated the work that the ministry that he could start and the proclamation of the God was about to be carried to every nation. They said Jesus had rose, he was alive, um, they were ready to blow the gospel up, right? What about the one that's not chosen? I'm asking the question today, what about the one not chosen? Joseph called the song. He loved the Lord. He was there. He could do the work. He met the criteria. Joseph maybe was thinking in his own mind, why not me? Feeling that that feeling like I want to run and hide. Feeling like somebody rejected him. He could run away. Joseph thinking, why is it that others who are less faithful and they get more blessed than I. Mm -hmm. Those who don't even do what they're supposed to, why do they keep getting blessed and I don't? Joseph thinking they brown nose are always want to be seen. Um, they want to hear and want to be always doing something. But why not me? Why isn't it my turn yet? Why am I catching it from all ends? I'm tired of living as the one not chosen. Can somebody testify, I'm tired of living the one not chosen. I've given my time, I've given my talents, I've given yeah. my children. Yeah. I've been focused and faithful and following. When is my turn going to come? Yeah, well. And if the church is going to be the church of Jesus Christ, 
Yeah. We can't just celebrate Matthias, as the one that was chosen. We must also minister to and encourage and embrace and support Joseph, who wasn't chosen. We must make Joseph feel, I don't care what you did, what you're doing, what you're going to do. Guess what? I still want you to know God loves you. I still yeah. want yeah. you to know your value. I still want you to know that want you to know that you're worthy, and I still want you to know that you are needed in the kingdom of God. Yeah. The one's not chosen is still a person that belongs to the same. Still saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, just wasn't chosen. He didn't get the job, right? His marriage might have been bad, but guess mm -hmm. what? Doesn't mean he needs to stay in it, right? Mm -hmm. The doors haven't opened up for Joseph yet, but how many people know God always got something and plan for him in mind for each and every one of us, right? Mm -hmm. He made some wrong choices and some wrong decisions, but how many people know God always working on our behalf and all things work together for our good? We must minister to Joseph. Because at some point in time, we will be the Joseph. Same, same. We will be the Joseph also. Uh -huh. The one that's not picked, the one that's not selected, the one that's not included in the group and the clique and the crowd. Yeah. We will be the one that keep on working in the yeah. name of Jesus. Wow. And keep on doing what God has called us to do. And nobody will recognize us. How will we feel? Because we're going to be the next Joseph. Yeah. We must, at some point, acknowledge the fact that God didn't pick Joseph. But that doesn't mean that just because God didn't pick him for that or this or the other, that God is not going to pick him. Right. Not picking Joseph doesn't mean Joseph is a failure. Not picking Joseph doesn't mean he's rejected by God. Right. Because God knows Joseph is able. God yeah. knows that he made Joseph fearfully and wonderfully. God knows that he has Joseph in mind. God knows that Joseph, and just like us sometimes, have to wait on the Lord, but we also yeah. got to wait in the Lord. Wait yeah. in the Lord. He knows and do see that we will reap if we faint not. We can't grow weary and well for him. We can't just stop and um, stop and not do what God has called us to do. How many of us know we may not be chosen, but just like Joseph, we gotta be ready. Yeah. We got to be ready. God knew that Joseph wasn't chosen, but God knew that Joseph was ready. Joseph was capable, able to do the job, had the position, and selection is not as important as what? Being ready. How many of us know? I don't care if it ain't Sunday, we still gotta be ready for Sunday night. Mm -hmm. I don't care if the church doors are not ready, but we still gotta be ready to be the church that's the church for a rock and a lost and a dying world. We gotta be ready to proclaim Jesus in and out of season, mm -hmm. no matter what pandemics or what war is going on, who's in the White House and who's coming to the White House. The church needs to be ready at all times. This world selects and votes chooses, but God just asks us to be ye also ready. Lots of folks want to be selected, but are you ready, church? Yeah. Are you ready? Some ready just being ready sometimes. We need to stop celebrating who got this position, who got that position. Yeah. We just got to celebrate being ready. And God on time, how many of us know what God has for me is for me. Yeah. My chance is going to come. Yeah.
work of the kingdom. Do you have to be a missionary to go out and tell somebody and witness and tell the whole world what uh, God has called us to do? Do you have to have a title to be a trustee to what take care of the things of the church? Do you need to be um, a member of the choir to sing the songs of Zion to let the whole world know you got a song in your heart? I don't care if you singing on the choir. Do you need to be the preacher to tell somebody that God still saves, God still heals, God still delivers? Do you need to be an usher to welcome somebody in the house all the way? And a 
police in a political world, right? He said he used me to invoke worship and praise that the presence of God be felt wherever she trod her foot, right? Use me, Lord, that if you can use uh, me, I know you can use the person that I lit their candle to. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, I'm saying, able to do this secretly and above.